Hey Dreamers, I'm Bryce from Midnight Notion. I'm a musician, songwriter, and a big fan of Metallica, but I have no idea what my favorite song is. Could it be Harvester of Sorrow? Let's use math to find out. Cue the intro. So Ted, give it to me now! For the best Metallica song! Harvester of Sorrow, here we are at track number six out of nine on Injustice for All. Really excited to get out of this. I'm actually really excited to get to the albums that everyone hates so that I can show you why they're actually worth loving. But I digress. This song is pretty decent. I haven't, I don't know that I've heard it live, but I know that they've played it live a lot of times. I know that there's a lot of fans that really are tired of it. There's a lot of fans that really love it. So let's find out where I am using the following categories. Lyrics, instrumentation, composition, memorability, and of course, emotional response. Each category is zero to four with a grand total possible points of 20. And we'll find out at the end whether this makes it to the top 10. Before I start, I want to remind you to hit that subscribe button so you can be here for the next one. And also, I got all kinds of music out there, not just uh, reviews, but I do cover songs and I make original music as well. So subscribe button here, find Midnight Notion wherever you listen to your music, and let's get this channel up to a thousand subscribers. All right, let's go. Harvester of Sorrow. Again, starting with a bang. Finally, finally. I love this riff. We got the hi hat, the little roll on the cymbals. I want to say how much I appreciate that this riff is four times through. Um, it's a very simple, clean riff. Um, but da -da 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 the first time there's that hard hit. But the guitars don't really ring out. It kind of just kind of bah, and then it gradually goes into the clean part. It does it once. It does it a second time. And then there's a hit on the third and a hit on the fourth. So we have two times kind of solo and then two times with hits. That's build. We're building. Now we're going into the electric part of the riff. Same riff as before, but now we've got that heavy drum hit and the heavy guitars playing the same thing. You know, I'm just hearing something for the first time. I don't think I've noticed this before, but it sounds like there's a sound effect in the background. It sounds almost like moaning, groaning, like zombies or something. I can't tell. I'm going to rewind this and listen really close while it's doing the bump, bump. Listen really close. There's like a... And I don't know if that's a steady uh, scrape of the pick on the string, just, or if that's like a voice and it's been slowed down or affected, or if it's a sound effect, there's like wind. I don't think it's wind. I don't know. Let's listen once more. Listen really close. I'll turn it up. That's creepy as hell. I've never heard that before. This is the first time I've noticed that. That is interesting. Hmm. Wow. So cool. Extra little meat to the song there. That's really cool. I, I just got a new appreciation for this song. I didn't know there were zombies in the background. That's really cool. How the first time through, and then we go up just a half step. It's just slightly higher that next time. Really cool. Now that's a riff. I want to 
point out that that riff is a is is a six bar riff. Boom. Drum fill. Back down. So there's six times through. It's one. Uh, it's it's one riff three times, and then a fourth is a new riff, and then there's that first riff again, and then that second riff again. So it's kind of a cool structure there, right into the verse. I love that the the drums are just playing straight, just a straight boom, ta, boom, ta. Pretty straight anyway. Then you might be adding some extra fills in there, but it's a pretty straight beat. And then the guitars are all on off beats. But up, bop, bop, ba da da da. Bob. So it's a one and, 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 and a one and, 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 and a one and. It's really cool. That's a really nice syncopation to this riff. And now we got the verse. That sounded almost, I think, I feel like I heard a, an edit in there in the drums. I'm going back just a little bit. Nope, didn't. I appreciate that the pre-chorus involves the main riff and then it is it's like a call and response thing main riff lyrics main riff and then now back to this riff and each time we have that main riff it's different from before right when it was uh when it started it was clean and then when it came in full band, we had the toms hitting bum 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 and now this time we have a pause ba -na -na -na. and then there's a drum fill and then the second time we have uh, the straight snare roll, ta -ta 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 -ta, right? So it changes each time. It's really cool, really cool. It's a good structure. This is a good, good way. We're we're bringing back what we had before, introducing it in a new way, and now we've got the chorus. Back to this. Love those stops. Really cool. I also appreciate any time a chorus has a setup like this. Um, this is very similar to who, For Whom the Bell Tolls. For Whom the Bell Tolls, time marches on. For Whom the Bell Tolls, nothing. Right? You're expecting time marches on a second time. Same thing here. Harvester of sorrow, language of the day. Harvester of sorrow. Nothing. Right? Leaving it empty, right? That's a good way to hook people in. Like, oh, I thought it was going to, oh, I better keep listening because they're changing it up. I don't know. I think that's really cool. I like that. Notice the difference in this riff. Now we have the crash symbol. Psh! Instead of the hi hat as it was before, we've got a we get that crash really just making you bob your head, yeah. Back to the hi hat. I love those emphases on uh, emphases on the two. Boom, boom, ka, boom, 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 ka. Really cool, really cool. Yeah. There's that Lars fill I was talking about a few episodes ago. It happens throughout the whole record. <laughs> Main 
riff again. Different fill. I want to point out that drum fill too, because um, a lot of times when drummers are doing a single roll, just a da 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 da, da right, left, right, left, right, left, um, they're hitting the kick drum with their right hand. Ba, 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 ba. Right? But this one, he's doing the kick drum on an offbeat, and that's re really, really strange for him. Listen really close to the kick drum on this fill. I'll try to illustrate it with my hand. There's a. I guess it's still on the right hand, but it's still an offbeat, right? So it's not it's not on the one. I don't know what the count is. I'm not paying attention to the count right now. All I know is that it's an offbeat, or it feels offbeat, and that's unique. Something interesting to point out. Love that note. You know, this is this is one of those solos that's actually better live. It feels kind of like they didn't really know what they were doing. Like that's there's there's elements of a cool solo, but it's missing that climb down. He kind of does that in the live version at the end there, and there's a little bit more flashiness. There's one part in there where it kind of just kind of falls off. And that's fine. It's okay. They've written much better solos. We can acknowledge that. Um, but I think I think the live version is much better. Now we have a brand new riff. It's a call and response. Once again, we have the new riff with the do 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 like the chorus riff. All right. So it goes up and then it comes down. Now it's half. And now it's a different riff and it's half as long. Back to We're switching it up. I like this. I have never understood the timing of this uh, re-entry back to the verse. So I'm going to take this time right now to count it out and see if we can figure it out because I know that they, when they play it live, do, 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 they just stop, they pause, they pause, they pause, and then James goes, oh, and then they just come back in. And I don't understand what is happening here. So we're just going to find out <laughs> together. I don't know. I can't count it. There's a there's a change in there. So one more time. Two, one, two, three, four. I don't know. It's a weird. It's weird, right? Can you feel it? I don't. There's like a weird. Oh, I. My mind is my mind is mind is breaking. One more time. It's wrong. I'm going to have to look it up after this, but there's a weird count in there and it's hurting my brain. Help me figure it out. PSA, please don't kill babies. Final chorus, extended out. Now 
we have that main riff and the clean guitar. kind of echoes out there for a little bit at the end. I want, you sh I want to show you real quick before we get to the numbers what's happening on the end riff there. All right, I got the electric guitar back out for this one. In the intro, it sounds something like this. But in the outro there, they were just riffing, uh, uh, repeating the first part. Why weren't they playing the riff all the way through? It's probably because it didn't fit with the main riff. Oh well, let's check on the numbers. Whoosh. Lyrics, what is this song about? It's about the harvester of sorrow, of course. Who else would it be about? You know, the harvester of sorrow. Um, it could be a very specific person. It could be an unspecific person. This band is no stranger to horror and the fantastical elements thereof. Uh, it's HP Lovecraft. It could be HP Lovecraftian. It could be you know a person that has lost their mind, is maybe going through some changes, is going mad, uh, and it also could just be like the Grim Reaper or something like that. So. Um, Maybe that's up for interpretation. You'll have to let me know if there's a specific reason behind the cause. I'm not looking up specific reason. I'm just looking at the lyrics. And when I read these lyrics, I think they're pretty good. There's a lot of really well-crafted lines. I like the way that they flow. I think that the rhythm of the song helps the lyrics flow out. There's a nice little, like, I think of the part, drink up. Shoot in, let the beginnings begin. Uh, it's it's a fun little tune, and the, the lyrics are short, and I like short lyrics a lot. I don't think we have to feed so much into every song. And so when an artist just goes with like a little laundry list, laundry list, grocery list, when they list out items and it's just word, word, here's some more words. I kind of like that because it's not conversational. It's artistic. It's poetry, and that's what I like. So I like that. Uh, I was going to give it a lot of points, but I'm going to knock it. This is my rule. We talked about this back with uh, with the title track in Justice for All. I'm going to knock this two points for just saying infanticide. I'm not promoting killing ba babies. I just do not think it's appropriate to even... I mean, I know that that's a thing in the world. I know they're trying to get this like subject matter, like, ooh, look at this scary, you know, pushing boundaries with our lyrics kind of thing. But there are so many other words and there are so many other things to say. It's not necessary. I, I think babies are great. I love babies. I love children. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and promote infanticide. So for the just the sheer fact is that that line didn't need to be in this song. Everything else was doing just fine without it. So because it's in there, it gets two points lower, which means lyrically, grand total, giving it a two. Instrumentation. How do they do? Eight. Hey, don't get mad at me about the lyrics thing. We're over it, all right? This is my opinion, not your opinion. The instrumentation on this song is fine. It's pretty good. I don't know. There's not a whole lot to complain about. I guess um, maybe the only thing that doesn't sit well with me is that solo. I feel like it's much better live. And even then, it's only it's a very short solo, and there's not much going on there. Everything else is fine. So we'll not get one point. But otherwise, instrumentally, this one gets a three. Composition. They're doing so many of the things that I love in this song. Introducing elements and bringing back later in the song and having a change to them each time it comes back. Having that intro and the outro again, but it's slightly different. Having sections that call and response. Introduce a new riff and it's only half as long. Respond. And like a lot of that stuff is stuff I really like. So even though it goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo section, verse, chorus, just like every other song, there's some interesting things. Um, I like that weird me measure, even though I can't figure out what the timing of it is. I like the um, just the overall construction of it. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I'm, I know that they can do better, but we'll give them positive points. This one, compositionally, gets a three. Memorability. How memorable is this song? I'd say super memorable. Harvester of Sorrow. 
Language of the Mad. That's it. Seven words. But Harvester of Sorrow is really the only three you have to know. Now, I have to admit, I always get the second part wrong, the, the response part. Harvester of Sorrow, Language of the... Damned? Language of the Dead? Language of the Man? I've never really known it, and apparently, according to the website, it's mad. But for me, it's Language of the Harvester of Sorrow. So maybe I can't remember the word, but it's super memorable. It's a hook. It's a very catchy, easy to easy to sing part. And because it happens over and over and over again, and then that main riff comes back over and over again, that riff is very... Do, 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 do. It was really jamming riff. I think it's pretty memorable. We're going to give this one a four. Emotional response. Overall, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't think I was as into the song as some of the others, but I feel positive. And my score is zero to four. If two is don't know what to do and one is and zero is then I'm going to give it a positive review. Not the best it can get, but I'm feeling pretty happy about this song. So let's give it a three for emotional response. And so Harvester of Sorrow gets a grand total of 15 points, which puts it, oh, just barely missed it. Look at that. Orion is in 10th place with 15. Harvester of Sorrow actually got 11th place because of my order of operations. So Orion is higher. It's not a tie because it had a better composition. My order is composition and then memorability and then emotional response, instrumentation, and then lyrics. That's my order of operations for this, this whole process. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot more 15s where that comes from. But so far, here's our top 10 list. Looking pretty good so far. Uh, it's going to be really tough to get up there. Uh, and uh, we've only got a couple more songs left in this record. So we'll see if any of those get there. Now, it's your turn. Using my scale, what points would you give this song? Leave it in the comments below and tell me what your thoughts are of my review. If you'd like to see things differently, if you'd like more things, less things, let me know. This is open. This is a, this is a group project. I'm here for you. I'm here for me, but I'm also here for you. So let's work together and make this thing really spectacular. And hey, while we're talking about it, why don't you hit that subscribe button so you can come here tomorrow as we talk about the frayed ends of salad, sality? Freight ends of sanity. We'll hear if they're calling me tomorrow. See you then. Thanks for watching.